from DNA design using genetic algorithms. My name is Crystal Jade F. Ugarin from EK51. Communication radar and remote sensing systems employ thousands of different types of antennas, and there is an increasing need for them to be high in performance and customized. Traditional methods of designing and optimizing antennas by using simulation or analysis are time and labor intensity, and limit complexity. Local research techniques are helpful, but because the search spaces of even antennas are highly multimodal, the initial guess must be close to final design, and therefore, these methods have limited usefulness. Evolutionary computation methods like genetic algorithms are able not only to optimize performance existing antenna designs, but also to create new kinds of antennas with highly counterweighted designs. Using AGA, it is a possible to describe a desired performance of antenna and allow the computer to find a parameters for the design. The GA has ability to find solutions when no one conventional antenna designed with conventional techniques is available to approach the requirements of a particular problem. Or when such an antenna is expensive and or difficult to manufacture, most antenna optimizations begin with the conventional design and the GA finds the optimal parameters based on the third conventional characteristic. For instance, an inherently high directive design like the Yagi Yuda antenna may be optimized for maximum gain. This approach is certainly useful since even conventional problems are difficult to optimize with most other methods and resulting optimized design will often be better than any found previously. However, greater in the this is to apply conventional designs to a conventional application where the GA has enough degrees to freedom significantly change the amount of operation of the antenna to suit new applications and create antennas when the amount of engineering constant is minimal. As the world goes increasingly wireless, they are moving grower number of antenna problems without good solutions. The tracking hospitals patients by medical research, wide band data communication, remote sensing, integrations of antennas within electronic devices, and many others are all demanding antennas that meet their needs. The history of genetic algorithms came from the research of John Holland. In the University of Michigan in 1960, but won't become popular until the 90s. Their main purpose is to be used to solve problems where the deterministic algorithms are too costly. Traveling salesman problem or the knaps cup problem fit the description. In the industry, genetic algorithms are used when traditional ways are not efficient enough. Genetic algorithms are part of the evolutionary algorithms category. They make use of the evolution theory to solve problems. These algorithms are by its part because they mimic living creatures fitting in the environment of survival. Genetic algorithms focus on the genetic material evolution instead of growth of individuals. In each generation, individuals reproduce and share their genetic material and applied to the population as a whole and followed in multiple generations, it is called genetic recombination. This picture is the ST5X band antenna was designed thanks to a genetic algorithm. This type of antenna is best for certain mutation pattern and is much more efficient than standard antennas. Partly because it's asymmetrical shape. Next, I will discuss each of these clauses uses different structure that expects different properties of electromagnetic waves. Antenna. 
Antida is a wire antida if it is constructed from conductors that are much longer than their width. As you can see, a ground plane. A ground plane, as it is a, has a large flat piece of metal underneath the antida, is often used in conduction with a wire antida. It acts as a mirror for a, the antida above it. Therefore, changes the antida gain pattern. A ground plane can decrease the required height or simplify the construction of the wire antenna. The hood or roof of a star acts as a ground plane. The antenna that will be affixed to such places need to be designed for use with one. Directively, and gain are two related qualities in antenna design. Directively is the ratio of power density being transmitted by an antenna in the particular direction to the average power density being transmitted in all directions. The gain is the directively multiplied by the ratio power generated to power input. Gain takes into account all losses such as loss due to resistance in the antenna, which convert some of the input power into heat and loss due to mismatch between the transmitter or the receiver and the antenna. When the losses are considered to be zero, as losses are considered to be zero, as in the directly and gain are equal, gain is usually expressed in decibels, which relates to the ratio of power or power densities with the following expression db equals 10 log times 10 times p1 over p2 in the case of gain p2 is the power density of an isotropic radiator that transmit power equally in all direction the abbreviation dbi refers to gain compared with iso with an isotropic radiator however, however the I is sometimes left off and understood from context. What is gain pattern or antenna pattern? A gain pattern or antenna pattern plots gain magnitude versus angle, showing the proportion of power in the antenna transmit in a particular direction. For 2D antennas or antenna symmetric in the third dimension, this angle is implying the ang elevation angle. In 3D, there are two angles that specify a direction, angle 0 in the azimuth. And the tida is considered to be directed if its gain pattern is heavily weighted in one direction. The greater the desired directively, the larger the tida must be relative to the wavelength, which is commonly labeled alpha. The wavelength is the speed of light divided by the frequency, so 300 megahertz signal has wavelength of about 1 meter. Voltage standing wave ratio or VSWR is a way to quantify the mesh between an antenna and a device connected to it. A standing wave is created when there is a mismatch in this connection which prevents power from flowing to and from the antenna. If the standing wave is large, implying a high VSWR, there is significant mismatch. If it is low, the match is good. A VSRR of 3.0 or less is considered adequate for many lower power applications, while a VSSWR less than 1.5 or 2.0 is desired if power considerations are important. A VSRR of 1.0 is a perfect match and can never be less than 1. VSWR is easy to measure and since it is common parameter specific by antenna designer, it is often an important quantity to optimize. In an unconventional application, the Yaga Uda antenna. This antenna was fabricated to a 1 over 6 scale in the a plane patterns in the value SWR are measured. Computed and measured patterns had reasonable agreement. The measured VSWRs were less than 3.0 over most of the band 
and had the maximum value of 3.7 near the ends. The measured gain were slightly less than 10 dB. However, if the reflection losses are taken into account, the correction values for a much thinner approach the computed gain. You can see the computed gain pattern of Yagi over a ground plane at 119, 235, and 251 MHz. So, each of the antennas described above the demonstrated a different quality of GA as applied to our antenna design. The Yagi antenna optimized for the Arecibo feed problem shows how the genetic algorithm can change conventional designs using them with unusual parameters to solve unconventional problems. The crook where genetic antenna show the raw power of the genetic algorithm to find not just an optimized design for an application but to create a new design with minimal help from the engineer. It may seem extremely surprising that a GA can autonomously find such amazing antennas. However, consider that many people have optimized antennas without any knowledge of an electromagnetic theory through the adjustment of their TB's rabbit ears antenna. I have prepared some questions that we will answer. Number 1. What is gain pattern? Number 2. Genetic algorithms came from the research of number three use of genetic algorithms. Number four, what is ground plane? And number five, what is genetic algorithms in antennas? This is all about my report. The genetic antenna. Antenna design using genetic algorithms. That's all. Thank you.